Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. There is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord, God of all of us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, Grant us, by the same Spirit, to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Genesis. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words, and as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bit mutant for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, Look, they are one people, and they all have one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there, so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. The word of the Lord.
When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at the sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Frisia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in their own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power, all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even, though my, even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood, fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I love these complicated days when there is so much activity that we're not sure the walls can fully contain it. Today is one of the church's principal feasts, the Feast of Pentecost, which some people call the birthday of the church. We are also baptizing Lewis, giving thanks for the ministry of our choir and Sunday school teachers as they complete a program year and begin a well-earned summer break, celebrating Solita Baird's 60 years of service on St. Paul's Altar Guild, and enjoying the parish picnic. It's a day that stretches the seams of coherence, which is exactly how Pentecost should be. At that first Pentecost, the Spirit descends and fairly chases the early church out of their sanctuary and into the streets. They spill out of hiding as God's good news spills out of them. There's a lively, effervescent overflowing everywhere. It is not a particularly Episcopalian event. 
Ten days earlier, the risen Jesus had called them out to suburbs of Jerusalem and told them to stay in Jerusalem until they received what the Father had promised. And then he had ascended into heaven while blessing them. I think that after ten days, some of them must have begun wondering what this promise was and whether it ever would come. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm much more unlike the disciples than I sometimes think, but I, at least, would have started to wonder, would have felt my courage beginning to ebb. But then, suddenly, the promise comes, and these folks who may not have been so much unlike you and me are so full of God's love and good news that it has to overflow. And that, I think, is what holds the seams of coherence together for our worship this morning. We are celebrating and beginning ministries that are born from God's love overfilling us. We have been blessed with Sunday school teachers so full of God's love that they have to share it. And that motivation is why those Sunday school rooms are often the most joyful place in town on Sunday mornings. We are blessed by a choir that is so full of the joy of the good news that they have to sing it. For longer than I have been alive, Salida Baird has cared for the holy things that we use to remind us that God is making us holy people. And we are not just celebrating ministries in progress or already complete. We are marking the beginning of Lewis's Christian vocation with baptism. We baptize young people because God already loves them. Our sacrament is an honoring of that already existing relationship between God and a person but it is also a commissioning for ministry. We are asking Lewis to start even now, noticing the ways that God's love fills him and to pay attention to the ways that love might overflow into sharing the good news. And as we commission him, we remind ourselves that we all share that calling. The best Christian ministry happens like it did on Pentecost, almost by accident, when joy and hope and love overflow and lives are changed. We don't all always feel like joy and hope are going to overflow out of us. That's okay. Sadness is not unchristian. I certainly hope that being tired instead of bubbly is not unchristian. But I doubt if those first disciples at Pentecost were bouncing before the Holy Spirit came. What matters is that they stayed until they were able to remember a reason for shouting with joy. They trusted that God's promises are reliable. And then there, where they were, they shared what they had been given, and the world was changed. Amen.
If you uh, find that your stature makes it difficult to see, whether because uh, you're young or, or for any other reason, come closer and there are uh, there's standing room in pews for kids who want to see what's going on. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Now present the list of officers to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person in his life in Christ? We will. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. believe in God, the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. Let us now pray for this person who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Open his heart to your grace and truth. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach him to love others in the power of the Spirit. Send him into the world in witness to your love. Bring him to the fullness of your peace and glory. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. 
through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. It's all right. It's safe. It's safe. <laughs> you ready? Lewis, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to put some oil on your head, okay? It's not going to hurt. It's going to smell good. Lewis, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. Peace of the Lord be always with you.
Good morning, good morning, and welcome to St. Paul's. We are delighted that you are here. I'd also like to greet those joining us by radio or through Facebook. We're glad that you're able to be with us in that way also. If you're visiting with us this morning, I invite you to find in the pew a card on it that says Connect. And if you fill that out and give it to one of the ushers, uh, it will eventually make its way to me and to our uh, greeting newcomers team. And we'll reach out to you and offer to tell you a little bit more about St. Paul's and begin to get to know you a little bit also. I made quite a few announcements in the sermon, um, but remember, please, immediately after this service, we'll have the parish picnic up in the river room with uh, the option to spill out onto the river walk as well. Please join us to party. Um, a few other things going on. Uh, we are updating the parish directory in a more serious way than usual, and Allison Nesbitt will be calling you or emailing you to confirm your contact information if you are in the directory right now. So she's not trying to steal your information for nefarious purposes, um, just to get our information correct. And if you don't get a call or email from Allison, then um, there's a very good chance that we don't have contact information for you. So reach out to the office if you don't hear from her during the month of June. This week we'll be sending out a survey about adult formation as we try to build the most robust possible adult formation program in the fall. I encourage you and entreat you to fill it out when you receive it. And we'll have multiple ways to fill it out if you don't do email very much. There are other important announcements in the bulletin. I'm going to tell you how we're going to distribute communion today, and then we're going to say some prayers of thanksgiving for some remarkable service. We'll be distributing primarily at the rail, and as has been our custom in recent weeks, this side of the altar rail will have the common cup, where we all drink from the same cup. This side of the altar rail will have the bread dipped for you by a minister. No one may dip their own bread. I realize that it's a little bit of a mess coming up in that way, but it's Pentecost, messes are normal. Uh, if you prefer to receive only bread, I suggest you come to this side, receive the bread, and then just cross your arms when they approach you with the wine. We'll also have a communion station down here on the floor for those who need it, it will be a station where the bread is dipped for you by a minister. All are welcome at God's table. Now, my friends, today is the last Sunday of the program year when the choir will be singing for us. Under Keith's direction, they have blessed us all program year long with beautiful music leading us in our worship. And so we are thanking them today and praying for them. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for the gift of music, which expresses our hopes, our sorrows, our love, and our gratitude. We thank you that we can sing what we do not always know how to say. We thank you for the St. Paul's Choir, for their dedication and skill, for the vibrant fellowship among them. Bless them with rest and refreshment this summer, and fill our hearts with song all our days, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today was also the last day of Sunday school for our children. If the teachers who are here would come forward, we have a small gift for you, and another prayer of thanksgiving to say. Get our Sunday school teachers to the... Yes, excellent. They want to see you, not me, so face them. Oh God, you sent your spirit to teach the hearts of your faithful people. Thank you for sending our church these gifted and loving teachers who share the faith with our children, not only through their lips, but in their lives. Stay with those who are leaving us 
and lead them to communities that will bless them and be blessed by them. Abide with those staying with us that they might continue to inspire your whole church with a lively faith and their infinite patience. Through Christ our Lord, who called the little children to him as an example for us all. Amen. Small gift. <laughs> if you can uh, coach a rector through something, you can certainly teach children how to be the faith. Thank you very much. And finally, I have been given strict instructions not to call her to the front, but uh, today we are also honoring Salida Baird's 60, our records show that she joined the Altar Guild in 1961. In training others on the Altar Guild, she taught that preparing the church for worship is never a burden, but always a privilege. And the best way to thank her may be to join the Altar Guild or to donate to the sacristy's renovation in her honor. And uh, as our Thanksgiving prayer for Salida's years of service on the Altar Guild, I'm gonna pray a prayer that is posted in the sacristy for the Altar Guild themselves to pray each time they work. Most gracious Father, who has called me your child to serve in the preparation of your altar, so that it may be a suitable place for the offering of your son's body and blood. Sanctify my life and consecrate my hands so that I may worthily handle those sacred gift, gifts which are being offered to you. As I handle those holy things, grant that my whole life may be illuminated and blessed by you, in whose honor I prepare them, and grant that the people who shall be blessed by their use may find their lives drawn closer to him whose body and blood is our hope and our strength. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for the people of God.
let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and to proclaim the wonderful works of God, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth to the parish picnic, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.